Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss what is process and what is process lifecycle in operating system. Whenever you write a program, by default, a program is saved onto secondary storage. It is called as a passive entity in this case. Whenever we want to execute that particular program, first we need to bring that particular program into primary memory and then we need to allocate the CPU time. Then that particular program gets executed. So program under execution is known as the process in this case. So program contains a set of instructions, each of those particular instructions to be executed one after the other. Now which particular instruction to be executed next that will be stored into something called as the program counter. Program counter is nothing but a processor's register here. Based on the content of this particular program counter, the program will be executed sequentially in this case. Now, uh, whenever you load that particular program into primary memory, it will be allocated some space into primary memory and the process memory will be divided into different groups here or you can say that the different parts. The first part of that particular process is nothing but the stack memory. The stack memory is used to store the temporary data of a particular program. The temporary data such as local variables, function parameters, return values as well as the return addresses. All those things will be stored into this particular stack part of the primary memory here. Now the second part of this particular process is nothing but the heap. The heap memory is allocated dynamically during the execution of that particular program. Whenever we start executing a particular program on a CPU, it may need extra memory over here. That will be allocated from this particular heap memory here. The next part of the process is nothing but the data section. The data section stores the global variables. That is whenever we start executing a program, it may generate some global variables. All those things will be stored into the data section of this particular process here. The very important part of any process is nothing but the text section. Text section comprises the compiled program code here. That is when you write a program on a secondary storage, it will be in a high level language. Once you compile that particular program, we will get something called as the machine level code or it's also called as the compiled program. That compiled program will be stored into this particular text section here. As said earlier, by default, the program will be stored into a secondary storage. And whenever we want to execute that particular program, it will be put into something called as the job queue. Again, it will be present on what you can say that the secondary storage over here. So let us say that I want to execute two programs. Then let us say that P0 is the first one and P1 is the second one. Both of them will be put into this particular job queue here. Now, whenever uh, the processes are present on this particular job queue, they will be admitted into this particular ready queue whenever there is a space into the primary memory. Let us say that uh, at a particular point of time, there is no space into primary memory. These two processes will be waiting in this particular job queue only. Whenever there is a space in this particular primary memory, these particular uh, processes will be brought into this particular ready state. That is nothing but the program will be stored into primary memory over here. In this particular case, uh, primary memory will maintain one queue that is called as the ready queue over here. So whenever we bring this particular processes from secondary storage to primary storage, they will be put into something called as the ready queue over here. So let us say that uh, P0 is present in this particular ready queue as well as P1 is present in this particular ready queue. Now what happens over here is uh, because we have more than one process uh, waiting for CPU, we need to use some scheduling algorithm and then we need to uh, put this particular pro program onto this particular CPU that is nothing but a running state. If CPU is free, if CPU is uh, already executing some other process, P0 and P1 has to wait on this particular ready queue here. If a CPU has become free, we need to select one of these particular uh, processes, either P0 or P1 based on the scheduling algorithm. We need to assign CPU time for that particular process here. Let us assume that I have selected P0. So P0 will be allocated a CPU time and then P0 will start executing on this particular CPU. When P0 is executing on this particular CPU, different things can happen over here. The one thing is uh, P0 may complete the execution. Once it completes execution, it will go and sit into this particular terminated state here. And all the resources which were allocated to the P0 will be released in this particular case. If P0 uh, makes some IO request, that is it is waiting for input, input uh, device or output device, or it is waiting for some event, this particular P0 will be removed from this particular CPU 
and it will be placed into something called as the waiting state over here. So P0 has made some IO request. So P0 will be removed from the CPU and it will be put into this particular waiting state here. Now at this particular point of time, CPU is free and there is one process waiting on this ready queue that is nothing but P1 that will be removed from here and it will be allocated the CPU time over here. Now P1 will start executing on the CPU. Now again the same thing can happen. The P1 uh, may complete its execution. It will be put into a terminated state. Otherwise, uh, it, if it generates some IO event or something like that, it will be put into this particular waiting queue here. Now, at this particular point of time, let us assume that uh, P0's uh, IO event has completed. So, it will be brought into this particular ready queue again. It will be placed into ready queue on primary memory over here. So, P0 is waiting for CPU. P1 is currently executing on this particular CPU. Now, uh, at this particular point of time, as I said earlier, if P1 completes execution, P1 will go into this particular terminated state here. When P1 go to this particular terminated state, CPU is free now. There is one process waiting for CPU that is P0. So P0 will be again allocated this particular CPU. So P0 starts executing on this particular CPU here. Now, if P0 completes execution, it will go to terminated state. Otherwise, it will go into something called as waiting state or ready state and so on. So if P0 completes execution, it will go into something called as the terminated state over here. So there is one more thing we need to remember. When a particular process is uh, running on this particular CPU, uh, operating system may generate some interrupts. Whenever an interrupt is generated, a process which is running on CPU will be removed and then it will be placed into something called as a ready state over here. So these are some of the states uh, through which a particular process will go through in its lifetime. Initially, a particular process will be put into something called as a job queue. Whenever there is a space into a primary memory, a process will be placed into something called as job queue. If CPU is free, one of this particular process will be allocated a CPU time and then it will start running on this particular CPU. If a particular process has made some IO request, it will go and sit into this particular waiting state. After that IO event, it will come back and sit into this particular ready state here. If a particular process which is running on CPU completes its execution successfully, it will go and sit into this particular terminated state over here. As said earlier, whenever uh, we want to execute a particular process, first it will be put into job queue here. After that, uh, if there is a space into a primary memory, that particular process will be placed into this particular ready queue. The same state diagram can be shown with respect to scheduling queue that has been shown in this particular diagram here. Let us assume that P0 is present in this particular ready queue as well as P1 is present in this particular ready queue. What will happen here is, uh, uh, based on that particular scheduling algorithm, one of this particular process will be selected and then it will be allocated as CPU time over here. Let us assume that P0 was given a CPU time. Again, there are different things can happen. Whatever I have shown in that particular uh, uh, state uh, diagram, the same thing has been shown with respect to scheduling queue over here. If a particular process which is running on CPU executed successfully, it will go into terminator state. If it has made some IO request, it will go and sit into this particular IO queue. If it has created one child process, the parent has to wait until the child has completed execution. Once that particular child has completed execution, it will come and sit into this particular ready queue. If a particular process has generated some interrupt, unless and until that interrupt occurs, a process has to wait here. Once the interrupt occurs, it will come and sit into this particular ready queue over here. There is another possibility that a particular process which is running on CPU may be suspended or it, it gets into sleep mode. Then it will be put into something called as a time slash expired unless and until that particular time slash expired it will wait here. Once the time slash is expi expired it will go and sit into this particular ready queue again here. I hope the concept is clear. If you like the video do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.